everybody. Ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss V. Today I'm welcoming my members into my studio. So in this uh, longer video, I will share with you my personal artistic process and practice. Uh, I love to paint uh, mostly with acrylics uh, and watercolors, but with acrylics on a variety of surfaces. I love to paint on traditional canvas, uh, but most of all on wood panels or masonite wood. And I explain this also in my posts uh, that are exclusively for members. And uh, I also pay, uh, paint uh, on different objects. For example, today I'm gonna guide you in painting a beautiful cutting board natural light wood that I found on sale and Hobby Lobby. Sometimes when I found an object, mostly the wood one, I'm very attracted by the texture of the wood and I want to paint. I painted the smaller cutting boards for my market and I sold them and people love them. I will paint only one side with acrylics so that is the, the side that you will keep exposed, right? After you finish to use it to the board and cut on the other side wash it out and then maybe if you have a special occasion or a special table you can serve uh, the food on the painted part because we're going to paint with acrylics uh, and after they are completely dry we're going to seal everything with a water-based polyurethane and these are articles that I will in the description box I will uh, include the links of places where you can find. I use uh, water-based because it's less toxic than other type of polyurethane and it makes it very safe. It creates a coat of protections on the acrylics, and so they will last uh, technically forever, depending on the care that you take of your cutting boards. I love the fact that the polyurethane doesn't change and alter anyhow the effect and the color of the acrylics and also the color of the wood. But if you would like to go with another stronger mordant, because maybe you like to make the wood a little more, like a little darker and create a radiant patina, go for it. You have to kind of research out. Now, if you want to do this with me, and maybe today you feel that you want to paint but you don't have the cutting board, please uh, use acrylic papers or canvas paper. It's more affordable than traditional canvas or traditional like wood panel. But if you have a surface that can be painted with acrylics, which is basically almost any, anything, because really acrylics can be used on a multiple like multiple su surfaces sorry so if you have that go for it or you can just like enjoy the design and maybe instead to use acrylic so you can use watercolor so you can do you i'm gonna switch the camera so you can see all the material that i prep for this uh, practice and everything is also listed in the description box so read it carefully pause the video and then hopefully you will be able to practice with me or you will watch the video and adapt it and stretch this practice and use it for another surface or another object that you decide to paint. Before we go directly on the cutting board, I'm going to show you a design on the paper. I will do the design with the black markers. You do it with the pencil, but I just uh, want to show you exactly the steps uh, for the composition of the design. You do not have to do the design on a separate piece of paper. If you are painting uh, today on an acrylic paper, canvas paper, very heavy mixed media paper, or if you decided to have a, to use your old cutting boards and try to paint on wood or any surface that you have available because you know that acrylics work on really anything, you do this design not on a separate piece of paper, but directly on the surface that then you're gonna paint with me with acrylics. I'm gonna do it on the paper just because I wanna show you the step-by-step -step so you have a very clear visual reference, and then I will transfer the design on my cutting boards. But when I do it on my cutting boards, I will still guide you with my words and you can see the gesture on my hands. Unfortunately, the pencil will be very difficult to see and i want to give you the best support ever into this practice so this is why we break it is like nailing down the design i'm doing on a separate piece of paper you don't have to do it on the surface that then you're going to paint so you don't have to do the design twice you just do it once you have it very nice nice and clear and then you can prep and start to warm up a little bit while i will transfer the design on my cutting boards i'm gonna switch the camera so you can see my hands and follow the steps Okay, I'm gonna do with the black Sharpie so you can really see the lines. Please do it with the pencil on your surface. 
I will start, I will do a floral design. So I'm gonna start with my first flower and we always start from the center. So I'm gonna trace two circles, one smaller, one bigger. And then I'm gonna start to create my petals. Slow, we go with a nice smooth lines. We leave some space between the petals. We're gonna diversify their shapes. We don't want them to be all like identical. And then uh, we are going to create one more petal over here and a couple of petals that will be like actually three be underneath the main one. So we're gonna have the opportunity to color them, to paint them slightly differently. Now we're gonna add the design inside the petals which are gonna give us an opportunity to use the different colors of acrylic. And I'm going to set a couple of pretty big leaves. So I'm gonna do from the line in the center and then I'm gonna bring it together one and then one more over here. Maybe a little longer. Now I'm going to fill this space and actually we start in a sort of a diagonal with a circle. This time I'm gonna do a different type of flowers, mostly like it's more inspired like a daisy. So we're gonna do the petals just more similar, like with a little less uh, difference, but please don't place them, you know, all together, create some nice uh, diversity. Some petal might be bigger, some other might be thinner. And we leave it that way. Everything else will happen when we are going to paint. I'm gonna do long leaves. I'm gonna do this wavy type of line here. Another one maybe here. And maybe another one coming down from this side. We're gonna do the wavy lines between Now we're gonna do one other flower. So this is the stem. We're gonna imagine that this flower look toward, towards the other. And we're gonna do petals. Like that. And maybe we're gonna come up with a leaf, a leaf over here to fulfill this space as well. Hmm? Don't worry about any other pattern and details because they're gonna happen after. So we trace the design, we paint the design, and then we do outlines and patterns. Now, I'm gonna fill this space with the same type of flower, just smaller, sort of a reference, right? We are building up our composition, creating something that harmonically will fill the space. The surface that I will paint is a cutting board, natural wood cutting board that I found on sale. And I love to paint on different surface surfaces and just also, oh, wait a second. I think that I have to, no, it's okay. We finish this flower. We do pattern exactly as we did for this one. I'm going quickly because this video is gonna be already long since we're gonna paint it together. I just wanted to give you a very clear visual reference on the design. Now I'm gonna create something to fulfill this space and to cohesive, um, cohesively bring everything together. Uh, maybe we can do some nice whimsical shape. Gonna do sort of a swirl like that, a little bit more. And like that, and then I'm going to add some circles 
here and there. You can make as many as you want. I'm using them to fulfill like the empty space. And this is gonna be the design. So now I'm gonna transfer this design of my on my cutting board and I will do it with the pencil though. This is why I wanted to give you the black markers reference. So pause the video, complete the design on every surface that you decide to paint it today and then we're gonna start to paint it together. Okay friends, I cover my table with a plastic uh, tablecloth. I have my color wheel nearby. It, you don't need to, but just in case you want to review and see how the colors interact to make your decision once you have to paint. Pencil for drawing, variety of brushes, acrylics brushes, a cup with water to rinse the brush when I switch colors and then a paper because you want to make sure that you tap the brush and you dry. Remember that acrylics are not watercolors. They don't need water to be, um, you know, smooth. Actually, I want the, these are medium heavy, medium body, which means that they are thick and dense, but not too much. And I want that uh, texture and the consistency to be exactly as you see. I place on one palette the worm like I've read rose red, magenta, yellow, okra yellow, and burnt sienna, and a little bit of white. And on this side, instead, I place my palette with a blue, uh, aqua color, uh, deep like a verdidia green, uh, olive green, and a little bit of white. I don't think I will use the black until the very, very end. And uh, uh, we're gonna start uh, first uh, with designing. So as you notice, I'm designing it in these directions because I want people to be able to uh, place it if they want to uh, use it as just as an ornament and put it on the wall, the design will work. But a design, I try to do something that fill the space nicely and you can really turn and it works in every direction. So pretend that you're drawing on paper. I'm gonna just uh, start to set my uh, flower inspired definitely by poppy flowers but it's my own version of, of poppy flower i want something very colorful i spend a lot of time in the kitchen because i love to cook and i paint a wooden utensil with the alcohol based um, ink i paint cutting boards i want this flower to have beautiful a lot of petals maybe we're gonna do like a so nice so we're going to create some pattern inside so we can paint it it's going to give us the opportunity to use more colors i'm going to do leaves then i want to have some different type maybe of flower over here more like inspired of a daisy so i will create these elongated uh, petals don't press too much uh, you can erase more or less like you would erase on paper but you want to make sure that you are gentle so you don't like uh, um, carve the wood accidentally we're going to create this different type of leaves longer I know that you barely you can barely see actually the painting uh, let's see if I can turn off the light well not really it's like uh, probably let me see I'm gonna have a close look then uh, I would like to have another flower coming from here it doesn't have to make realistic sense my friends remember that these are like a beautiful whimsical fun composition 
create a little bit perspective over here so the look that this flower is looking into this one now we're gonna create another nice uh, wavy leaves over here let's see if we can see just slightly better i know it's difficult to see the design on the wood and then uh, i probably want to add uh, let me see is a like a sort of zen tangle inspired right design a similar design that i did on some of my practice uh, i really like to close so we feel the space then we can create some nice beautiful circles and then another little flower here like that and we recreate the pattern now that we have our probably i'm gonna add the one more leaves over here coming down because i think that it is kind of balance it creates some balance and then we are going to paint probably I'm gonna add a few more circles here it's like that these I don't know tiny little seeds maybe can uh, embrace the design and help to keep cohesiveness into the whole things and now we start i'm gonna start with my leaves uh, probably so i'm gonna start uh, with some of the green sometimes i will mix uh, i will you know match uh, you see the green at the beginning it doesn't like a uh, look it doesn't cover entirely right the surface but we are going to go with a very thin coat. One of the best and most important trick to learn when we paint with acrylics is that we don't want to scoop a lot of acrylic all at the time, but we want to scoop just a tiny little bit of colors, the right amount of colors, and then spread it very well on the surface, making sure that you have a very thin coat and let it set while you go and paint something else some other area with the same color or you switch it to another color then we're gonna go back on a second time and we are going to cover the surface with a second coat if needed if you like to see the wood underneath the texture of the wood don't go over with too many layers I know I feel that it is difficult to see the design and that I you know apologize but there is not really anything that we can do and because the pencil is the way that it shows on the on the wood and uh, the wood is pretty light and if I I could have done with a black uh, sharpie but then you have a black thin thick lines that you will struggle with so it was like a matter of a choice okay how do i want my painting to look like and for this design i really didn't want black thick outlines and so i used the pencil to draw and uh, i am sorry that of course the pencil cannot show so well so you have to kind of 
follow my hand and probably post the video to have a sort of a screenshot of the the images but also friends remember that you don't have to copy exactly what i do we have been doing together so many zentangle inspired practice that if you kept all the paper that you have been practicing or if you have them on a journal you can go back and choose your favorite illustrations your favorite design and just recreate it on this different surface and as i say if you don't have a cutting board if you have a whole cutting board that you want to sacrifice for this experiment, wash it out, dry it and do it. But if you don't have a cutting board or if you don't wish to paint on a cutting board, uh, paint it on a different surface. If you have a very thick and strong mix and media paper or acrylic paper or canvas paper that I will show you in the future because I'm gonna, this is where like on those surfaces where I paint my practices before I paint on canvases or canvas board, right? When I prepare a new collection, I do a variety of practices and I always use acrylic uh, paper or canvas paper. Now I'm gonna mix a couple of greens so I can have a different, a third type of green. I'm gonna mix a tiny little bit of, you see I mix this Viridian green with olive green and now I'm picking a little bit of white and mixing it together so it's going to give me a sort of a, like a minty green. Please do experiment and mix the color. If you don't like the color that it comes out from this, from the mixing, you don't have to use it. Very simple, right? But if you like it, then you can use it. It's important that we mix, uh, we have infinite possibility with colors, right? So of course, uh, we do respect the color wheels. We know what they are. We use basically always the primary, secondary, and tertiary, but experiment. And remember that you can create a tint by mixing white into the color. You can create a tones by mixing gray into a color, and you can create shade by mixing black into colors. So infinite possibility have fun and experiment if you try to stay of course in the outline of your design so it's kind of nice and neat for you to follow but just in case something happened and you go over don't worry because acrylics the beauty things of acrylic the beautiful things is that they dry pretty fast and they allow us to go over even with a lighter color on top of a darker color, something that instead that we cannot do with watercolor. So I would say that overall, acrylics are more forgivable than watercolors. Now, I think that I will grab a little bit of yellow over here. I will mix it to this green and I will create a, like a warmer, green mixing yellow with the olive green and i will use it to paint this other uh, the other half of those leaves and i already can tell that i need to give probably a second coat to this one but i really like the contrast of a warmer green versus a colder green it's a nice break for what concerned the brush uh, you know you might want to use a rounded brush or flat brush that is something very personal it depends on the way that you hold the brush it depends on the way that you feel that the brush is executing the brushes like the strokes uh, And then uh, little by little, the more you paint, uh, the more you will figure out and you will find out your best brushes. I'm gonna clean the brush like this, so just with paper. As I say, if I'm using the same color family, I don't even bother to wash it uh, in the water. I wanna keep my brush soft, but still dry. And then I will go over with the Viridian Green on top of the first coat that I uh, applied on my leaves because it's already dry 
The secret, really, it's really important, is like to pick a little bit of acrylic at a time, do not overdo it, and do not think that painting happens in one single coat, because it doesn't. You will be able to go over and over with several coats of painting, and then, you know, your design will be completely done. So even at the beginning, colors do not show exactly as they will show on the palette. Trust, trust the pros and don't overdo it. Don't pour more acrylics. Keep going with very thin coats. You see, this one was a very thin, it's already dry. And I'm gonna go just over with a tiny little bit more to make the color a little more intense. Even though, if you like to see all the texture of the wood underneath, you can leave it uh, as a very thin coat and it will show you the uh, texture of the wood underneath a little more. In this case, I won't paint the background, so I will actually leave the wood, you know, showing because it's really beautiful. But when I will do the polyurethane water based, if you have Mod Podge, you can use it too. I will definitely wait that everything is dry and I will do it all over the surface to seal everything really, really well together. I'm gonna mix a, a little bit of this green, like a turquoise aqua with an olive green and see what happened. A little bit of white to create a nice tint. And then I'm going to carefully do the stem of the daisy. Take your time. Go slow. I love to use a flat brush because you can use them flat and then you can turn them on the side and use them a little bit for smaller uh, surface and surfaces and spaces. thicker and that's it and retouch here now we're gonna put this brush into the water with this one as well and we are going to do we're gonna start to do the flowers so for the flowers I really like my favorite brush so we're gonna start with some nice warm color I'm gonna put my colors close by. Be careful, pull up your sleeves, and I'm going to mix a little bit of this rose red with the traditional red, the fire red with, you know, rose red, and see what happens. I have a beautiful, beautiful, nice red, and very gently and very carefully, I will start to fill the space into the petal, leaving out the inner, portion of it. You go and you try your best to be as precise as possible. Once again, if something happens, we're gonna fix it later because you will go over with the second coat. Nice. The This particular like natural wood, I don't even know what wood is that. Let me see. Wait. That is not like, but it's very, very light. Uh, looks like maybe pine and it's perfect because the colors show very very well if you have a darker uh, wood available they might show a little different which is also so beautiful though and fascinating right because you have the interaction between the acrylics and the surface that you decided to paint this is why i love to paint on woods i love to paint on repurposed glass bottles i will show you that as well that I turned them into colorful lanterns and as I say I spend a lot of time in the kitchen I'm Italian I love to cook I love you know I cook every day simple meal because we have all of our meals 
at home. I cook from a raw ingredient from scratch. Um, and so I wanted to make it beautiful and pretty. I love to have a special dinner, special table. We keep a mixing a little bit of rose red. We bring it in the center. Look, we bring it in the center. We bring the other in the center and we create that, these colors in the middle. And we keep going. So nice and relaxing. You can put some nice music. Uh, while you do so. Stay always focused on what your hands is doing on the surface. If you feel that you're getting distracted, reset. Take a little moment. Don't add too much pressure on the surface. Acrylics are intense. And as soon as you touch the surface, they will release their color. So there is no need to go and, you know, be aggressive with the brush. Spread it very well. One more petal to go. and spread it very well and since we have uh, the color we are going to go directly onto the other tiny flowers so we don't have to recreate the color all over again we're going to use it if you want a variation go for it if you want to use more or less the same colors like i want to uh, you will keep going and we will finish first these type of flowers before we switch to the other flowers and to our final details. Painting takes time, my friends. So, of course, this is a practice that can be longer, but you don't have to do it all together. Maybe today you just lay the design on the surface that you selected and then you started to paint half of it and then another day when you feel ready and you have time in your schedule you will complete the painting so you can open up the video again because it's available at your convenience and you can kind of uh, uh, keep painting and finishing the coloring and then maybe another time you will do the final details so we don't need to feel overwhelmed and when something seems overwhelming for us so we adjust it right so we turn into something that it's pleasant to us it's rewarding maybe push us a little bit because it's always good to push our limits right so we conquer above we go above and beyond right and we learn new things but it's also important to be gentle to ourselves and adjust the routines and practice uh, as they benefit us the most. So if you have an hour and a half or a couple of hours, you're gonna do it all at once. 
if you don't have or you don't feel that you can commit to an activity for such a long time, organize it in different way. So you will organize the activity in a way that you just do it 30 minutes each time. And so you divide it in three, four times, right? You adjust it and you make it uh, doable for you. In Italian, we say volere è potere. It's like to want something is to can, to be able to do something. So if you want to do something, you will find a way, the way that works better for you. I'm trying my best to stay in the lines that I traced and respect the design but remember if something happened like it happens here and there i'm gonna be able to go over i really like this i think that i won't go over with another coat maybe if you want to just like a quickly reinforce the red with a second coat I didn't forget about these petals on the back. I just wanted to do my, I just want to create a little darker color. So I'm gonna create a shade for this nice bright red. Oopsie, careful, careful me. On this type of design, these styles, like, I don't know how to define, like, folk art, a little Nordic inspiration, but it's my own. I want the outlines to be nice and precise, that is not really shading, so I want the color to just pop, and the design to pop from the surface. Now, let's create our darker color for this one, so I'm going to actually tap a little bit of blue and I'm gonna mix it to where I already mix the red and the rose red I'm gonna mix a little bit more of both because I don't want it to, like a too dark I don't want this purplish violet color be too dark I just want it to be slightly darker and when I have my colors I will go and I say yep that's good it's darker than the petals but not too dark. And now we do this one. And I know that I should probably replace this brush because it's getting really old, but I'm so attached to it uh, that I'm having an hard time to let it go. And actually we have uh, one more so just enough color to do the last one which is here.
nice and slow and that's it i'm gonna pick a little more kind of clean up the brush just to add a little thicker layers a little thicker layer it's one and that's it now this one doesn't have it's time to light it up i'm gonna rinse the brush i'm gonna tap it and clean it and now i'm gonna create a beautiful nice orange for the inside of the petal mixing a little bit of the traditional red with this yellow and i'm gonna do it on a side so i will steal some pure yellow so always mix the color on their side so you will keep a part of the color pure so just in case you need it you have it and then you have your mix on the side and very carefully i want to light it up because then i think that i will do the inside the black and i would probably use a black posca marker so which are acrylic markers the uni posca is the japanese brand and they're definitely expensive but they're really really good and they last for a pretty long time so now if you go a little bit inside of this circle it doesn't really matter because the black will cover it all nice and slow it's very pretty I'm gonna go with this orange down. I'm gonna fill this. And then probably one little coat on top again. And we're gonna let it set and dry. We don't do the center until the very end. And as I say, I will leave the black outlines, patterns that I want to do on top, if any, and the final details, I will do them with the black Posca marker. So just because it allows me to do, you know, precisely to go precisely around the uh, edges and the outlines, but also to do it in a reasonable amount of time compared to the brush and the acrylic, right? Also because when I create this stuff, I sell them on my during my Christmas springtime. Christmas market, springtime markers online. And I always need to ask if I spend like six hours in painting something, how much should I charge, right? For a cut decorated cutting board, probably $200. But how many people will be able to buy a cutting board or would buy a cutting board for $200? So would invest $200. It's not that they don't like it or they don't want it's just life is very expensive and it's tough and one of my big commitment to art and to people is can i do my best to keep my prices as affordable as possible so not only wealthy people but more people can afford to buy beautifully originally made art which is much better than print and stamps and uh, other stuff you know like but I understand that if you have to provide for your family and you have to choose and uh, you cannot spend $200 in art because maybe you have to spend them in grocery. So I really try my best uh, to be, you know, as careful as possible. So it's not that I don't put quality. As you can see, there is quality, there are materials, and there is a lot of work. It's just that I, you know, I have to balance, I find, uh, I try my best to balance. 
Now this one is gonna be a little tricky. I need to pull my elbow, some my elbow, my pinky on the board, which is dry, thankfully. And then very carefully I go into these shapes. I'm picking my light burnt sienna, this bronze brown. I always had a difficult relationship with brown, but now I'm rediscovering them. Very happy. Then maybe we can add a, a tiny little bit of this red and we mix it with this brown and we see what do we have. I'm gonna mix also a tiny little bit of blue. So we create a sort of purple mixed with brown. I love to experiment with colors. That sometimes I don't know how to name those colors. And I don't know if you notice when you buy big palette with a lot of colors, they go crazy. They go so creative with colors. Sometimes, sometimes with my students in school, we have these big uh, boxes of alcohol markers and there are so many different tint and shade and tones of the same color, let's say a blue or a pink, and they start to get so creative with name. So names are really funny. So we ask, what does that even mean? Is that a real thing? And I tell my student, I think that they need to be creative because they need to name those colors. And at one point they run out of names and they start to get creative. Now oh, here I'm getting creative in mixing them, but I'm not gonna get to name them. It's really nice. Very nice, 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 nice. Then let me see if we can now alter and mix a little bit of yellow, maybe, and see what happens. I'm gonna take the side of the yellow and mix it on the color that I just made. A little bit of this light, we mix it all together and we have a new one. And we're gonna paint the third. Over, nice and slow. Then I think it's time for me to change the brush and redo these sides a little better. Good, this one. So nice, nice shading and blending. Gonna add some light over here. Nice, and then I'm gonna pick the dark one and go a little over this one. Now, let me see what else. We're gonna do some magenta and we mix it with these colors. Gonna have some fun. So we kind of turn down the magenta And see, nice and light. Don't worry if you by accident go, go on top of the petals of the daisy because you're gonna paint them afterwards, right? So we can always fix and adjust. And here we are. 
now we're gonna light it up going on to the yellow which is gonna be it's gonna give us an orange since we have this brownish pinky color already on the brush so it's not gonna kind of turn immediately into yellow we go slow feel the space Then we pick some yellow, I'm gonna pick some white. We're gonna light this up and we're gonna have like, you see, there is a little bit of everything now in my brushes, all the brownish colors that we use it. So it's kind of a surprise, which I love. Sometimes I don't clean my brush at all and I just keep going and mixing color because I love the surprise that comes with it uh, I think that we are going to I'm gonna retap a little bit on the first uh, uh, when I mix the magenta with the brown I'm gonna go just lightly over this one to create a nice touch a little more on the pinkish side very nice indeed and now we have uh, our last one so I'm gonna tap the brush on the paper I'm gonna really take white my brush is uh, uh, spoiled by the yellow the brown and all the colors so the white uh, that i will set is not pure white it's giving me this nice peach undertone and i love it I'm gonna go and see there now we're gonna start to color the petals of our daisy and I want to really have a yellow, but I will mix this yellow with the white. So you're going to take the white, bring it over here and mix it with some yellow. Don't mix it the center. And if you need to add the more white after you do your mixing, you will be able to do so. I mix, I mix, I mix. And even if it's not perfectly mixed, sometimes I like it even more because when you start to brush, to brush it on top of the surface, it will kind of show some a uh, uh, tiny little like different colors and it makes it a little more authentic a little more spontaneous right so very carefully we're gonna go with one coat on our petals If you need to clean the brush you can kind of just gently clean it on the surface that you know you're gonna paint with that color go all the way down into the circle don't worry if you're going inside absolutely We go up, turn, and back down. We're going to definitely go over with a second coat on this yellow, light color. Sometimes they need a couple of more coats to show their true nature on the surface, right? And even if they're light, we want them to be intense, right? Now we go on the second. Do you see? We need to mix a little bit more white and yellow. Mix it, mix it, mix it. I also want to point out that this is my personal practice and the way that I love to do things. That doesn't mean that it's the only way or is the perfect way or is the most correct way. Actually, it's better if you have like a, a palette to mix the color and prep them already. Some artists like to prep 
I like to prep their color palette, all the color that they might need and all the color of the color wheel possible already prep on uh, the palette. I find it easier with um, oil just because the oil would keep their moisture while acrylics tend to dry. So if you pour too many and if you already mix too many, but then you need the time, right, to execute your painting, they might get a little dry and sticky along the way. So this is why I set the color that I need. If I need more, I will set more colors and I mix them along the way. Also because sometimes I don't know exactly what I wanna see on my palette. And only after I start to paint, I know uh, what colors I need. Now, this happens when I paint on surfaces such as uh, cutting boards, wooden utensil, uh, wooden box, uh, trays that I turn into beautiful, beautiful, beautiful artworks and something more like a spontaneous uh, when I have to paint the canvases. So I really need to start to think very well about the concept, right? That I'm expressing, uh, the statement that I wanna make through that collection that I'm about to present in a gallery. I practice first, so when it's time for me to paint on the final surface, in, in that case, uh, I will definitely prep all the colors already because I already practiced, practiced and I know exactly what colors I need. So I want to have them ready so I can keep going and I, you know, mix them with the palette, like the little knife palette. But for this type of painting, I want to be a little bit more spontaneous. And now our yellow is done. I think that I will just tap the brush. I'm gonna start to get a new piece of paper. And I'm gonna just grab a little bit of white that once again is not gonna be pure white at this point. And I can just do a, a nice touch on each petal. just to bright it up a little bit. They're here, here, here. And here. Now we need to think about something for our circle and I will definitely pop in some of this beautiful blue to contrast this warm uh, color palette that we are setting. And I'm gonna try with this tiny brush and I will keep this one close by, flat. So I'm gonna try to do like this. one side second side let me see if this one can work better maybe too tiny this one is good for the small circle so let's start to pick some of this beautiful uh, electric blue and see what happens i'm gonna start from small circle nice uh, slow uh, and we keep going nice and slow. Nice and slow. I'm gonna do the medium circles first with this tiny brush. And then I will switch to a little larger but still flat and square brush. Remember that if you lose the circle a little bit, that don't look more like a perfect circle, it's not a big deal because it's not a geometric pattern, right? What we are doing and these circles can really represent 
anything, just a decorative motif, seed, abstract representation of the seed of the flowers and whatever. Um, so we keep going, keep going. If you feel that you are not ready to do tiny, tiny, tiny details with the brush, you can always leave this for the Posca markers. I will definitely go around the outline uh, of the circle with an acrylic markers, Posca markers, so just to redefine them better. But if you wanna just leave it and do directly with those markers, instead to use the brush, go for it. At the beginning, you want to facilitate your practice and you wanna make sure that um, you help yourself, you support yourself, right? It's not a competition. It's not that you have to prove that you're already able. This is like something that you will acquire little by little with the practice. And let me tell you that sometimes even after years of practice and many, many projects, some artists, they support themselves with specific tools, right? And there is nothing wrong with that. On the contrary, like there is humility to embrace our, you know, no limits, but things that we are still working on. So you have to do you once again, you follow me as much as possible. And then the rest you have to modify and adjust, go for it. If you have question about what type of modification, what I do, what can I use? instead of this what can i do instead of this please always feel free to uh, send me a message and i will do my best to answer you as soon as possible so you will be ready for your future the next practice these are very close so we're gonna be careful that i don't bring them together by accident Now I'm gonna mix a little bit of this turquoise with this. So we're gonna add a little variety in the blue. We're gonna create this nice aqua color. And we use it to uh, paint these last circles. And maybe we can do a little touch inside the other circles that we paint with electric blue instead. So here we go. Oopsie. The beautiful things is that while we painted these final details, our canvas is our canvas. Sorry, in my case, my cutting board. But in your case, if you have been using a canvas or an acrylic paper or canvas paper, the colors are basically already dry. So they are ready for the final outline with the acrylic markers and so for example we can add the nice touch of this beautiful aqua color inside the other bubbles let's call them bubbles that we paint sometimes if you want we can go over completely creating a third right color something that we are playing with and then we can mix a little bit of the dark blue and do the same instead inside this aqua color bubble just a little touch of blue now I think that I will actually use the same nice blue to go here around the center of our flowers 
go very slow tiny little touches little by little the inside is gonna be black so nice and thick actually maybe the inside is gonna be that turquoise colors and the black are gonna just be the outlines you see sometimes i change my mind along the way and i suggest you to keep your mind open because we don't have to copy really uh, anyone and anything we can be inspired but then we can make our own personal decision according to what looks better to us because remember that you need to feel connection with the piece that you're doing if there is no connection it could be the best piece ever you're not gonna like it dry the brush we don't want to add any water at this point i'm gonna pick the pure aqua color and very carefully i'm gonna kind of feel the space inside be careful because the blue that we just use is still wet because we just barely set it down And then we go to the other one. I really love it. There is like a kind of a motif going on with this nice circle inside and outside the flower. Color palette that call each other, you know, the colors that they are calling each other and they are referring to each other in this beautiful, colorful composition. And we are all done. And now we're going to let it. Oh, no, wait, I have one more. In this case, I think that I'm going to go with a very dark brown to kind of call this color. So let's go with this purple that we created before. We need a little bit of this blue. Oop. In here and brown in here. A little bit more blue. Yes, nice, dark. So I put some red rose, um, traditional red, like so, bright red, red rose, blue and brown. And I'm recalling that. And now very nice and carefully, I pick the color that I create. It's beautiful, intense, subtle burgundy. And I am feeling the inside of the daisy. I want something pretty nice and big. And here we are with the leftover. I'm gonna actually go on top of this one again. If you feel there are spaces that you want to go over once again to kind of make the color show up a little more intense, go for it. I'm going to clean this up. We have this one over here that we can use for this side so we can kind of smooth it down, make it a little more intense. You know, and we can keep going until the colors are exactly what we want and what we expected. We can take a little bit of that dark brown, light it up, and go over this one for our final touches. And then I won't touch those. I like that very much. We're going to let it dry. Now our painting is dry and we have the Posca black markers. If you happen not to have a Posca, maybe you can use a black Sharpie. It will show very well. And once we seal it with a polyurethane or any other sealer such as Mod Podge, it's more common and less expensive. Although the sealers are a little expensive, you, the markers will stay. I'm going to use the Posca. Just if you use the Posca, make sure that you don't add too much pressure. You always have a piece of paper here to tap and make sure that the tip doesn't is not releasing too much ink and then we can start we can start probably from the leaves which is the first thing that we paint so we know that they are 100% uh, dry we're gonna do some nice outlines you can make them as thick 
or as thin as you want. And then remember that you can also use the black to create nice texture, like, sorry, nice patterns. I love, love patterns and lines. They really cheer me up. And the black will also give us the opportunity to maybe fix some tiny little imperfections that might happen during the painting stage. Go slow. And then we're gonna do the same on our second leaf. No pressure. Gonna be nice and gentle. I'm gonna move around just because I wanna make sure that I'm, you know, being left-handed, I don't go over stuff that I should not go over. I'm gonna probably do the leaves over here. Let me see, let me make sure that. The surface of the wood sometimes it could be a little rough under the markers. Just be careful, don't add too much pressure. And maybe change the direction of what you're working on your strokes. One side that will give you like a smoother surface if you go in one direction if you go to another you will encounter more uh, resistance from the wood right i think is the direction of which the wood has been cutted and the little challenge that we we encounter where we don't paint on uh, usual and traditional surfaces i'm gonna make a different type of lines to create a different type of pattern in these leaves. You do you, if you wanna do something different, you will go for it. If you have been practicing with me, you now developed, you know, a pretty good set of skills. And we have been doing different entangles and different floral abstract composition My goal for this design is to be nice and colorful, cheerful, and to be well handcrafted, but not too, too perfect. I want to be able to be, you know, I, wanna, I want it to be nice and authentic. And definitely that people can understand immediately and figure out that it's handmade. It is not printed or just done with stencil.
also the texture of the acrylics underneath can create some bumps just play around embrace them and don't contrast them we go to the second flower just making sure that you can properly see i'm gonna first to the center it's gonna be nice and bumpy i'm gonna add these tiny 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 little strokes around some dots inside very nice and then very carefully i'm gonna do the outlines of the petal i can already tell that it will be a little challenge here because there is some texture from the wood and from the acrylics so i'm gonna go nice and slow we go just on the edge of the acrylic so when you feel that texture left from the acrylic so when you meet the natural wood is when you place your line and off you go the bubble just place the line when the acrylics meet the wood so just right around in some cases you will have to go on top and if you do so maybe you can just create a thicker black so they still look pretty precise even though they are not perfect circles we don't want them to be nice and smooth one longer strokes so focus all the way all the way let's close this here now one more way and we go all the way around and then we do one more i need to go a little more on top of this you want to really dedicate time and attention to this last step because the outlines can really enhance your piece or ruin it so you want to make sure that it's nice and slow if you need to shake the Posca and tap it on the paper, never do it because you see it will release a lot of ink. So you're going to tap the tip until it's kind of releasing the right amount of ink. This is the one that you want. You try a few more times and now it's ready to go back on our uh, you see we release a, such an intense black that is gonna bleed a little bit if it's too much i feel that it's even too much now on that one and now there is really nothing that i can do i'm going to kind of create thicker outlines for all of my circle at that point because if something like that happened we have to embrace it this posca is now is producing is giving me more ink so what we are gonna do you see it's like it's darker it's blacker it's thicker 
and now we're gonna go over some of the other circle to kind of balance and make sure that the black show the same and tiny tiny i know it's like a tiny little imperfections like a little bit of the black uh, bleed like it through the wood and off we go now we're gonna do the big flower we go over our pattern and slow and now the petal over here is an act of love and patient it's a couple of hours Probably what I would do, I would go over those outlines to make them look thicker and kind of camouflage a little bit the tiny, 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 tiny little imperfection over here which is still part of this design and part of this process and part of this experience. And I'm really, really like, and I'm really pleased about this piece. As I say, we wanna make sure that it's very well handcrafted, but it's definitely look like a hand painted and not something printed or that people made by using label, you know, like the sorry, um, stencil is a unique design that nobody can, well, nobody, that can be replicated, but still, you know, it's an original design that we just did for this piece. So this piece is unique. And it's gonna be ready after the polyurethane, which I'm not gonna show you because it's just like you let it dry for one day and the day after you will go with your sealer. It could be an acrylic sealer, polyurethane sealer, mod podge sealer, whatever you want or you have available. Experiment, uh, you know, natural wood really absorb uh, pretty much everything. And it's up to you if you want a glossy or neutral or a matte feeling. I will leave mine neutral. I don't want to alter the way that the design look right now. 
I actually uh, want to keep it this way. There you go. I'm going to just do this and then really just one final details because I really want it to look pretty, pretty, pretty. Very carefully, I will do some nice lines and patterns over here. You don't have to do it. But at least I'm gonna show you all the way until the piece is ready to be sold. Well, actually, I'm not sure because I really like this one. I might wanna keep it, but we'll see. You don't want these lines, if you're doing them, to be too perfect. We want some nice, nice movement. And we're gonna do the same or a tiny flower. They don't need to be equally spaced. They don't have to be super straight. So control them, but don't control them too much. Finally, few dots inside, few dots inside. And let me see, I'm gonna turn it to show if it's complete. I think I really like it. Probably I would do some few dots on the side of the petal. Not everywhere, but just on the side. I feel that these final details make such a huge difference, difference in a design, so they are really worth a little extra time and a little extra work because they would make a special, really, it, a piece of really special and unique. And you also show the people that you're selling the piece to, you know, that you dedicate really attention and passion and care and love. So they're taking something that it was made with love and care. Same here. Also these dots, so you can make them a little random, right? They don't have to be equally spaced or numbered. Uh, just go with the flow, trust your, you know, guts. What would you like to add, more or less? And I think that I will do it here as well. I do love dots. I feel that they create like a, doing dots every, not everywhere, but in different element of this design that we create that visual cohesiveness because you have this element of repeated which is something very simple because they're just tiny little dots but they are adding something special to the design and i know that sometimes so you just want to be done at this point but you know if you do it with passion and for passion and love you actually don't want to be done Right, I want to do it just finally a few more here because these the flowers are really light, so we want to kind of embellish them and back them up a little bit, create a little more structure to them. Yes, definitely the right decision now that I see them with dots, much better. And I think that we are all done. As I say, I will let this piece dry for one day and I will do the polyurethane tomorrow to seal it all. And I really hope you like it. 
Okay guys, we did it. Uh, this was a long, beautiful painting sessions and session and maybe you did it in three or four times. So you just watch the video to learn more how to face some specific project. For me, it was a beautiful opportunity to create a deeper connection with you all. Um, as I said, the studio time is very private and personal to me. So it was very, I feel very like a, uh, good in sharing this uh, special moment of my life uh, with you all. This is the beautiful design that we did it together. And uh, now tomorrow we'll be all ready for the polyurethane. I use a water base, but as I told you before, and in instructions, you can use also other products. And I will make sure that in the description box, uh, there is a list of uh, all alternative and possible materials so that you can use if you want to kind of start to paint and embrace an artistic practice for you as well. I see you all very soon. Thank you so much for supporting this channel and for helping me in creating this beautiful, wonderful virtual space that we share together. Ciao a tutti!